a bit, little bit ashamed, what would your pseudonym be? Probably just some like generic women's name, like Susan Smith. Oh, that's my aunt's name. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah. <laughs> it's random. Mm-hmm. Um, just, just then it would get lost in like history, mm-hmm. and it wouldn't be like, oh, that's who's this person with this wacky name? Like Johnny Depp in this was Oprah Noodle Mantra. Yeah. See, that's is too how it like is in the credits. That's too obvious that it's a fake name. Yeah, and it's also clearly Johnny Depp. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure why he why he did that. Mine was always uh, Pedro Espinosa. Hmm. When I'd get into trouble when I was a kid, they're like, hey, you, what's your name? I'd be like, oh, me? I'm Pedro Espinosa. In the 90s in Edmonton, people can't tell the difference between like Spanish people and Indian people. <laughs> so I would just be like, yes, I am Pedro Espinosa. Oh. And they're like, yeah, yeah, you're one of those... One of those filthy browns, so oh. it's all the same. Oprah Noodle Mantra. That's quite the handle. Okay. I want to see him sign an autograph with that name. I would get an autographed Johnny Depp picture if it was signed Oprah Noodle Mantra. Yeah, that would be awesome. Well, let's get into it. And we're going to be talking all about the works of Oprah Noodle Mantra today <laughs> on this episode of I Love This, You Should Too. My name is Indy Pedro Espinosa Randawa, <laughs> and with me is Samantha Susan Smith Randawa. <laughs> Those are good names. <laughs> and we are members of the Alberta Podcast Network, which is locally grown and community supported. Today, as you can tell, we are going to be talking about the sixth. Are we up to six? Yeah, we are number six. The sixth installment of the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise, which is not called A Nightmare on Elm Street 6, but is rather just called Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. The Final Nightmare. If only. But it kind of, I don't want to get into okay. it, but I, it kind of I know of it'll is. ruin something for next episode, so I won't get into it. <laughs> so Samantha had never seen these movies, and I said, three of them are pretty good, so we're watching all of them and talking <laughs> all about them. So we're really going to break down part six right away. But first, let's thank our first sponsor of the episode, and that is Park Power. Winter is coming, and energy usage for all Albertans will be increasing. So now is a great time for listeners to look at their utility bills and ensure they are on the best plan. Albertans have a choice who they pay their utility bills to, and Park Power is happy to provide free, no-obligation comparisons. If you decide to switch providers, it's easy, and you can feel good knowing that you are supporting a local business and helping give back to our communities with your utility bills. You can learn more at parkpower.ca. Well, Samantha, this is your first watch through of Freddy's Dead, The <laughs> Final Nightmare. What are your first impressions? Um, This one is not as bad as number five, but is still bad. You know what? I completely agree with you. <laughs> this one is like a little bit more watchable than the last one. I think a lot of people that are kind of my demographic, mm-hmm. like grumpy men, they hate this one the most. Oh, really? And I... Big controversial statement, do not. not to, I'm not saying it's not bad. It is a bad movie and I don't like it. <laughs> you heard it but here. Indy loves number six. <laughs> I think five is worse. I think six gets closer to what I expected the rest of like the bad movies to be. Um, it's over the top. It's silly. It's catchphrasy. It's doing these pop culture references mm-hmm. that we've already forgotten what they're referencing. So it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, sometimes so it's just nonsensical. It is bad, but I'm more forgiving of those bad choices than I am the ones in number five, where mm. it just doesn't make sense and character motivations don't make sense. Yeah, that number five was just all over the place. I forgive these big swings and misses of making this like a Looney Tunes cartoon Mm -hmm. more than I forgive the just laziness of number five. Mm -hmm. You're right. It is kind of like a Looney Tunes cartoon. Oh, it's it's straight up Wile E. Coyote for a good part. (laughs) Like wacky and all over the place. It's still bad, but in a way that I'm more used to and more forgiving of, I guess. Yeah, it's... It's fun bad again. Yes. Whereas the last movie was just like annoying bad. This one is an easier movie for me to get through Mm -hmm. because it's silly and less frustrating. Mm -hmm. 
I just think the choices they made are bad, but they're making some choices. <laughs> yes, yeah, so some choices were made. So let's talk a little bit about the context of this one being made. The last one was still quite successful. It made a lot of money, mm -hmm. but in the standards of Nightmare on Elm Street movies, it was the least successful. Right. So they're like, you know what? We're done. We had a good run. Let's finish it off and let's get extra people in by really doubling down on the fact that this is the last movie. Right. It wasn't, but, but you, it kind of is. But I understand them wanting to be like, oh, no, you have to see this one because it's like the conclusion. Yeah, and they, they tried some things and they tried to add in some backstory. Some of it I thought was actually successful. Some of it was dumb and yeah. had like skeleton tadpoles. <laughs> But when they were doing this one, they got some scripts from a few different people. And one of them was Peter Jackson, who at the time was making, I think, some real cool horror movies. What kinds of things did he make? Because I know his name, but I don't know what he oh, did. Oh, let's go on a little tiny journey into the world sure. of Peter Jackson. So at this point, he had done a movie called Bad Taste, which is very gory and has aliens it's a low budget new zealand movie hmm. he was in it as well and i believe there's one point where he jumps on an alien's head with a chainsaw and saws his way through it and comes out the alien's butt so that's the kind of movie he was making interesting he then went on to do dead alive which i think is the next year after this so it was around the same time and dead alive i love it was my thing of the week Probably about a year ago. I was going to say, a, I've heard of it. <laughs> it's a super gory, silly zombie movie. And he was really influential in that horror comedy kind of realm, which I was very into at the time. So he wrote a script and I really liked his premise. So it was going to be in a world where Freddy Krueger is like this old washed up joke. Oh. Which is kind of... Uh, That's a nice, like, angle to come from. Really what the world was feeling at this point. Right. So he's still a dream demon, but the teenagers of Spring... Not Springwood. Springfield, Springwood. The teenagers of Springwood. Now it's, like, a fun thing to, like, go to a party and, like, hey, we're all going to go to sleep and then we're going to go into our dreams and we're gonna just going to kick the shit out of Freddy. This, oh. this piece of junk. Because he, he's, like, a, a washed-up hack now and everyone... Nobody takes him seriously. Uh, so they would all go in there and like beat him up and stuff. Oh, wow. And then one kid falls into a coma and then is in the dream world kind of permanently. Mm -hmm. And Freddy kills him. And that fear starts spreading. And as the fear spreads, his power starts coming oh. back and he becomes like what he used to be. And I like that as a nice parallel of this movie saying, like, yeah, we know that this got into a stupid place. Mm -hmm. These movies are bad and he's a joke now, but we are going to bring that fear back. Yeah, that's... I love that. I would totally see that movie. I would love to watch that movie. Unfortunately, it doesn't get made because the director of this one, Rachel Talalay, she has been working on a bunch of these movies. I think she starts off as like an accountant or something. Oh. And then is becomes a producer and gets <laughs> a higher and higher role. And eventually with this one, she gets to direct. Mm -hmm. And she is also in that long line of directors of these movies that I personally dislike. <laughs> because like the director from 2 and from 5... I see interviews with them and they just don't seem like nice or fun people. And mm -hmm. they also don't seem to understand what the success of these movies was. Because they're all like, no, no, we're really smart. <laughs> the whole like horror thing, the whole Freddy Krueger thing, that's not really that important. Right. And, which is a, a weird thing to do when you're on your Freddy's sixth movie. The most important. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but anyway, she gets it. So she comes up with the story and that's the story we see here. Uh, and someone else does the writing and Rachel Talalay directs as well. Hmm. But through those meetings Peter Jackson had with New Line, later on he has an idea to adapt some books and make them into movies with New Line. And those do end up getting made. Oh. Uh, it was this trilogy that was called, um, what's the name again? Lord of the Rings. Oh. I think it did pretty well. And then those Hobbit ones as right. well. So that's probably what Peter Jackson is known <laughs> for a little more. I knew but his name and I think that's why I know his name. I say go back and watch uh, Bad Taste and Dead Alive. Dead Alive especially. Mm, okay. Those ones are really good. Then we get this movie, and it's um, it's a movie. 
It's of its time. It is. It is very early 90s. <laughs> At least he doesn't skateboard in this one like he did in the last. No, that was like too trendy on the nose kind of. Like this one does as well, but I think mm. those little things that they put in, you might not even be aware of the reference because yeah. it's so specific. Like there's oh. jokes about Nintendo commercials in this. Oh, see, so yeah, that like, would go right would over you my head. Put that in, and most people because it's not exactly a a, a timeless thing. Mm-hmm. Commercials from the early '90s. True. I uh, before this week, I hadn't seen a commercial in like months. This one also is 3D. A portion of it. A portion of it, I mean. Yes. But yes, so that was like of the time. Yeah, I seem to think that it was earlier, the real height of 3D, but maybe not. Because it's all of this is before we were of an age where we were actually going to movies yes, or anything. We, we were in the world. But I came into the world of uh, A Nightmare on Elm Street after all of these had come out mm-hmm. because we we're just too young. Yeah, absolutely. This is 1991. Well, let's go through this uh, silly movie. Yeah, this is the silliest of movies. So it starts off with, I think there's a Nietzsche quote, and then they follow that up with the movie quoting Freddy Krueger, and it says, (laughs) welcome to prime time, bitch, Yeah, Freddy Krueger. That was interesting. Yeah, it also doesn't even apply. Like, he says things about dreams that you could put in. I don't know why you would pick that, but that sets up what kind of movie this is going to be. Yeah. It's like, hey, look at this silly stuff. And we're quoting from like four movies ago. I learned on the internet that this is supposed to be in 1999. Oh, yeah, because they do say... 10 years from now. Right. So I thought that was interesting. Which would make it 2001. Yes. But it, I don't know. The internet told me it was 1999. Okay. We're 10 years after and there are no children. (laughs) Yeah, and we get that in a war game style screen with like yeah. a digital map of the US and say there are no children. It but reminded, actually there's just one. It reminded me of the screen from Oregon Trail. Oh sure. Yeah. Who says like of that time. Um and then the adults are apparently they've gone crazy because there are no children. Yeah. Which is like it's a fun twist. Um but I didn't like that the adults were drawn into it i kind of miss when it was only the kids well because they're living in this like dream state of like talking to invisible children and it felt a little bit betraying of the like before when adults had no part in freddy's world Mm. so we get introduced to who we think is our protagonist and he never gets a name so he's just john doe (laughs) and He's on an airplane, and there's some fun stuff with the effects of him falling out of the airplane, Mm -hmm. because all of his dreams tend to be about his fear of heights and falling, which I think looks pretty good. It was pretty good, yeah. But then we do the dream within a dream within a dream thing, and they have this falling house, and then we just do a Wizard of Oz parody. I was surprised that, yeah, they went with like full ripoff of Wizard, Wizard of Oz. I liked Freddy as the Wicked Witch. That was kind of fun. It was, like... I, I know it's dumb, so I'm not saying it's good, but of the bad choices, it's kind of fun. It's a fun thing to do. I don't think they needed to do the whole Wizard of Oz thing. To keep the music going for as long yeah. as it did. I think it even goes on to when he's falling down a hill for 25 minutes, which happens right away. We watched it in 1.5 speed and it was still ridiculously long. <laughs> And then we get a little bit of back and forth with John and Freddy, and he eventually jumps through a, like a John-shaped hole, mm-hmm. very wily Coyote yeah. already, and he makes a hole into reality? Into the real world? I think that's supposed to be the border of Springfield. Springwood. Springwood, sorry. <laughs> yes. And so I think he's like getting away from freddy and freddy can't get through there but he's sending him away we learn yes that it's actually all part of freddy's plan what does he say be a good boy and fetch i think a little doggy and fetch okay yeah and uh so i thought that was kind of funny he's back with all of those great taglines great in quotes (laughs) yes yeah in three they were fun even when they were kind of dumb in here they get less sensical again true so John is sent off to go bring Freddy children. Yes. One in particular, mm-hmm. which we'll learn about. 
And then we get to cut to a center for youth or something. They live there. I think it's like a shelter yes. for troubled youth. Yeah. And Breckenmeyer is there. He <laughs> plays Spencer, who is just like a dick 90s yeah. kid and really looks like it. He looks like a combination of the two oldest kids from Home Improvement. And he's uh, dumb and likes drugs and video games because kids these days, man. Yeah, he just has a lot of, um, he has all the stereotypical bad kid things. Yeah, he's meant to be like this cool, rebellious yeah. teen. But then you look and he's like making pipe bombs. Yeah. So is he just a terrorist, actually? That's not normal. That's not like a rebellious kid. That's a straight up criminal. Yeah. <laughs> and we get uh, Carlos. Yes. Who can't hear out of one ear? Yeah. Or maybe both. He only has a hearing aid in one. And when it gets taken out, he can't hear anything. So maybe that ear kind of works to use a hearing and aid. And the other, the other one, one just doesn't. doesn't. Work at all. I don't know. Can't but do. either way, he uh, likes to bring up the fact that he's deaf in pretty much every sentence. Yeah. Just in case you forget. And people like to steal his hearing aid out of his ear. Do they? Yeah. There's one part. Oh, maybe it's just Freddy who does it. Freddy cuts off his ear and then it turns into the hearing aid. I'm yeah. unclear as to what happens. That's not then, how ears that's work. <laughs> and we get the angry girl who is angry about everything. And also she is angry. Yes. That is her character. Her name is Tracy. Tracy, right. <laughs> and then we meet Spencer, who is kind of this. Oh, that is Spencer. That's Brecken Meyer. Right. And he uh, doesn't want to conform and be his dad because apparently that's his only choice. And there's also a therapist who we just call Doc, who is a dream specialist. Yeah. Kind of? Is he a dream master then? No, he's just a dream student. Oh, okay. He's a student of the dreams. And he does the best he can, but he only gets to meet with the kids for 23 minutes a week. Such a random amount of time. Is that a joke? Or is it bad writing? I think well, it's, it's bad writing both ways, but is it meant both. to be funny? But I think it's supposed to be like, he's so stressed and he has so many kids to see. He only can like a lot, 23 minutes to each child, maybe? Sure. It's like a 40 hour work week divided by however many kids. But it seems like there's only these four kids. Yes. Anyways, John arrives and he yells a lot and he hits a filing cabinet and he's angry with a chair and then he sings all night and he's just like a real dick. Yeah. There's... A lot of bad acting in this one. Yes, there is. Who's good in this? Freddy. <laughs> I don't know I'll who's think, good. I'll say he does good with what he's doing. It's some weird things that he has to do. Mm -hmm. He's consistent. I think Maggie is good. Mm -hmm. I think Carlos is fine. Mm -hmm. And I think Breck and Meyer is fine. Okay. I think Tracy, the angry girl really annoys me because she doesn't have any characteristics other than being angry about everything and inexplicably mm -hmm. yeah and also john he's pretty bad he's pretty bad he's yeah. not good at and this. he like it, he like his character seems to have no concept of what he's even doing in this movie except when it's convenient for yes. the plot and he remembers <laughs> immediately and he has a dream where he sees himself in the dream and it says, free me, you idiot. I'm your fucking memory. Oh, yeah. And it's a very, very rough delivery. That's what all people suffering from amnesia go through, right? I think so. They just dream about themselves. Yeah, their memory being manifested yeah. as themselves being locked in a institution of some sort. Yeah, totally normal. So we get something that we haven't seen too much of, or I guess it happened in Dream Warriors as well, where if something is happening in the dream... The real world people are acting it out, even if there are like phantom things. So in this one, he's going upstairs in his dream. Mm -hmm. So he's like walking on the air in the real world. Right. Going up invisible stairs. And he ends up knocking a cop out of a window. And <laughs> rather than the cop like sh shooting him or, I don't know, being angry, he yeah. just goes, you asshole. Yeah. For being knocked out of a window. That seems like through a glass window. Like a major underreaction. For defenestration? Yeah. Defenestration? Is to, that falling out a window? To defenestrate someone is to throw them out of a window. Oh, interesting. Yeah. It sounds so much more intense when you say it that way. Throwing someone out of a window seems intense. True. But yeah, to defenestrate. I learned that when I was in Prague because they had this revolution that was mostly about defenestrations. Oh. They didn't like chop people with swords. They just threw them they out of windows. They just went around throwing people out of windows. Yeah, That's... from the Prague castle. But it, you, you still die. Oh, it was in the castle. Yeah, because it, it's quite a drop. Okay. I thought you meant just like people in their apartments throwing each other out of windows. <laughs> there might have been some of that. 
And there's a bunch more dream stuff, and what we learn is that most people think a blank water tower is the most distinguishing feature of a town. Yes. Maggie, the doctor or person who's in charge of these children, Mm -hmm. uh, she finds a clipping, um, uh, like a newspaper clipping that says Springwood on it. And that's how they decide that they're going to go on a road trip in order to make John remember his life. And of course, the other three kids are stowaways and they're hiding in the back of the van because they're trying to go to California or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. They I didn't just really want. Pay attention. I think they just wanted to get away. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they can be uh, homeless. Yeah. And live on the street. That's the better alternative, I guess, because they really hate this place. Although it seems. It seems fine. There is everything that's in whatever city that's supposed to be, like the big city, mm-hmm. is just covered in graffiti constantly. Yes. So that's how you know it's bad. And they're and like their van, van is <laughs> covered in graffiti. You'd think they'd clean that off before driving it across the country or wherever they're coming from. There's no time for that. They have to save these kids. <laughs> I like that the Springwood sign doesn't try too hard. It just says Springwood. It's a nice place to live. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and they get to the Springwood Fair. Which is weird, and it's it's dumb. Yeah. It is a dumb scene, but it's also kind of spooky. So yeah. I, I kind of liked it. It was, yeah, it was creepy for sure because these adults are just in a trance and are just, I my favorite was the guy circling in the bumper car. I liked the himself. smoking clown. Mm. It's just a clown smoking a cigarette, <laughs> which was pretty funny <laughs> to me. And my next note is, Oh, fuck, Roseanne is in this bullshit. Oh, my God. Oh, fuck, now Tom Arnold is here. <laughs> Who's Tom Arnold? That was Roseanne's husband at the oh, time. Okay. He's an actor as well and is quite annoying. But for to his credit, he is self-aware of how annoying and untalented he is. So he kind of like jokes about that. So okay. that gives him a one-up. Yeah. So I like him better than Roseanne. I forgot how much I dislike her voice. Oh, my God. It's so annoying. And how she was... Just like one of the biggest stars Mm -hmm. in American media for several years is wild. How did that exist? Like she had her own show and then they rebooted it. Yeah. And then she got kicked off. Oh. Because she um, said a bunch of real racist stuff. But then she was like, it wasn't me. It was the (laughs) Ambien. And then they get lost because the kids have to go drive back to the shelter or whatever. And it's weird that they were willing to... uh, stow away so they can just run off and be by themselves Mm -hmm. and then she gives them a vehicle to run off and be by themselves but then they're like okay we'll go home now that's home to the shelter ill-advised for the adult in charge to send some children off with a car you'd think they would take it and run away because they are trying to run away yeah but they don't they're being good but they have the scene of them getting lost, which was very poorly done. Yeah. It just has them pulling up to the same stop sign over and over again, and they take different turns. Yeah. The directing is suspect in a lot of this movie. The loop, um, like being stuck in a, a constant loop, was better last movie. And it wasn't good last movie. It wasn't great last movie, but They've this one was done better. They've used it three times yeah. now, and it's never worked well. Mm-mm. I say it worked in four, kind of, and not in five and six. Agree. And then there's the bit about the map. What's yeah. the map say? The map says we're fucked. Yeah. That was kind of funny. And like I liked that the map grew so big yeah. that he couldn't physically read it in the yeah, car. Yeah, there's some funny sight gags. Yeah, there's some moments. But there's nothing scary in this movie. No. It, is, it has not. turned into a straight up comedy. Yes. And I think maybe that's why I forgive this movie more because I made like horror comedies mm-hmm. and that's the thing that I... I like have experience in it and i that's the thing that i like i don't think this is good or well done version of that but it's fine well it's not fine it's bad but it's forgivable <laughs> <laughs> and just the idea of this town with no children because freddie killed them all yeah that's a good idea that's yeah, spooky absolutely it could be a way scarier movie than it is yes with the right script yeah, that whole atmosphere could be like a uh, like a children of the corn mm-hmm. kind of thing, but it's it's not. <laughs> and they find out through something that Freddie has a kid, which really excites John, despite mm-hmm. the fact that he has no idea who Freddie is. Right. He has amnesia. John, like we said earlier, has like bouts of memory when it's convenient. Meanwhile, the rest of the gang is going into the Freddie house. Yes. 
Which I think in the flashbacks, we learned that Freddy lived there before Nancy, uh-huh. maybe? I think that's what they were trying to unclear. tell yeah. people. Um, I which liked... makes sense why he's always attached to that house then. Yes. I liked this part of the movie because they go into like an abandoned for sale house and then it turns into the Freddy house. Like the Freddy house can camouflage itself. Yeah. The powers in this are kind of all over the yeah. place. But, but it was fun. You what, I think one of the reasons why I forgive it in this one is the last two movies of nonsense have prepared me for it. Yeah. So now when it's nonsensical, I'm just like, yeah, whenever. They're all nonsense. Yeah. As long as it's like semi fun. I think if I had watched this after one or after three, Mm -hmm. I'd be much more critical. Yes. But coming after five, you're like, yeah, that's not so bad. (laughs) Does it make somewhat sense? Yes. And Carlos dies because we get this dream sequence where I guess he he was originally deafened because his mother punctured his eardrum with a Q-tip? I guess so. Maybe. And then Freddy puts a Q-tip through his brain and cuts off his ear. And then then he can't hear. But then he gives him like a super hearing aid, which is like a spider creature, yeah. very cronenberg And now he's hearing too good. Yeah. So he's scared of needles dropping, right. like actual pins dropping. Yeah. But there are louder things going on, but those don't. Around work. him, yeah. Matter. Like Freddy's laughter would probably be louder than a pin drop. Or his own breathing yeah. or him walking on the metal. Exactly, but yeah. Whatever. Uh, he ends up dying because Freddy does this like, mime routine with a chalkboard and eventually <laughs> scratches it a bunch and then it blows up his head and his head explodes sure yeah it seems like something that could happen <laughs> where does this rate in your scale of freddy kills um it was it gets points for being different and it gets points for sticking to a theme and uh like sticking with it because sometimes you get so many random things in a death scene so i think this one is top 10 deaths oh wow yeah i don't know where in the top 10 it might be low top 10 but it's still up there oh i put this much closer to the bottom oh, really? i don't know how many actual numbers of deaths yeah there were, we don't know but that percentage <laughs> wise this is a bottom quarter for me okay. bottom third you didn't like it no i thought it was dumb <laughs> i think oh. at this point i'm willing to give points for creativity yeah. When we get like a new, exciting, different death. It was new. I don't know if it's exciting. <laughs> okay. Speaking of uh, different but stupid deaths, then we have Spencer who's in the house and he has half a joint. So now he thinks it's like really cool and funny when he sees his friend trapped in a TV and mm-hmm. he's just like, yeah, man. <laughs> <laughs> because that's that's what uh, cannabis does to that you is people. The power of weed. You can smoke half a joint and you can't tell what's real. No. And I need to find some of that stuff. You can't sit up. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that joint was laced with something. I don't know. I don't think it was just weed. And then we get that Johnny Depp commercial. Because do you remember all of the This Is Your Brain on Drugs commercials? Um... I don't think I've ever actually seen one, but I know, like, the concept of it. Yeah, it it is just that. But in this one, Freddy comes up and hits Johnny Depp with a frying pan. Right. And that's comedy. You mean Oprah... Noodle mantra. Noodle mantra, yes. It was fun to see a past freddy alum yeah i think earlier drafts of this script had many people coming back there's this other script that someone else wrote where i think there's still the daughter of freddy but she joins up with like previous previous dream warriors oh. and then they all get to, and they make the super team and they go kill freddy which again a better movie that would be fun so back to Breck and Meyer smoking this lace <laughs> joint. There's this big psychedelic sequence where they play Indigata de Vida, which was fun. But then he goes into the TV and I guess his body actually does too. Yeah. And you're like, okay, psychedelic. They can't find him then. Yeah. Psychedelic sequence. I'm in on this. But then it quickly turns into a video game sequence and it gets really bad. Mm-hmm. I thought so, at least. I thought this was terrible. And Freddy does things like going, ooh, great graphics. (laughs) And he's not even doing scary Freddy or the maniacal laughing Freddy. Right. Now we get to see, like, contemplative Freddy Mm. and pensive Freddy and hamming it up Freddy. I don't think we needed that many Freddies. We did not. Also, I didn't like the makeup that Freddy had in this movie. I agree. I think this is the worst makeup of any of them. He was, like, healing. Yeah. And Freddy's face is supposed to be gross and, like, freshly burned. Yeah, it looks like he's getting better. Yeah, which he isn't because he's still Freddy. 
He also makes some Power Glove jokes. Power Glove was this Nintendo product. Oh. Which was timely in 1991, but (laughs) I don't think a lot of people get it now. And he says, like, now you're playing with power, which was, I think, the Super Nintendo catchphrase. Or maybe the the Power Glove for Nintendo. Whatever way. I definitely didn't get that reference. Yeah. And why would you? Why would even people at the time be like, hey, get it? It's like that one Nintendo commercial. (laughs) Yeah. And it also turns into a cartoon a little bit because then Breckenmeyer's body is bouncing around the real world. Oh, so I guess he doesn't actually go into the TV. Because his real world body is bouncing up and down like a cartoon and just making cartoon noises, which I think the makers of the movie think is the same as a video game. Yeah. They think cartoons and video games are the same thing, which I'd argue they're not. Video game stuff in the real world, but they can see him. Yeah, bouncing. Yeah. And And making just, again, Looney Tunes sounds. Yes. Wiley Coyote. And then the angry girl punches the main character and it sends him through a table into the dream world Mm because she knocks him out, I guess. Yeah, so you can like now meditate, you can be hypnotized into the dream world. Yeah, she says, oh, I'll go get him. How? Meditation concentration, she says. Yeah. Okay. Okay, (laughs) sure. Is that a power of yours? That was never mentioned. But also she does seem to have like dream powers like Kristen from the previous movies. Yeah, a little bit. Because she understands the dream world very well and she can do all of these tricks and she can enter and leave like Alice did. Mm -hmm. But we never really mention how or why. Yeah. Or you ask how and she goes, meditation, concentration. Yeah, that's her catchphrase. There is one funny bit in all of this that I thought was pretty good. Where John Doe is in the bed and there's all the scary stuff. And he goes like, nothing's making me leave this bed. And then it catches fire and he says something like, okay, fine. <laughs> and then he's like, funny. God, I hate this house. Yeah, that too. <laughs> Which is funny. I like that. That was maybe the only funny part. Yeah. That was like actually funny. <laughs> yeah. And it shows that like Freddy's always listening. Yeah. Or the house is always listening. Is the house its own entity? It seems like it. Yeah. It seems like it's an extension of Freddy. Yeah. But it also seems like everything can be an extension of Freddy Mm -hmm. whenever it's convenient. True. So whatever is my answer. (laughs) Yes? Question mark. And now it turns into like real Wile E. Coyote territory because John is doing another falling thing and Freddy wheels out a bed of nails. Mm -hmm. And then he has like a comedic beat where he's like tired and he like rests on the bed of nails. (laughs) Yeah. Which is something we've never seen from him before. And John falls on it and dies. And the end of him, who we thought was going to be the main character, but he's dead already. Yeah. And we do get to see Maggie like holding John's body. And it disappears. And you can see like the blood coming out from where he's been punctured. And then, yeah, he disappears like in a video game, I guess. But he wasn't the video game guy. No, but... His soul goes into Freddy, Mm -hmm. which I guess that's something that happens. Freddy eats souls. But where does his body go? I don't know. It literally disappears, which is an odd thing to do. That doesn't make sense. (laughs) But they drive outside of Springwood, so now Freddy can go wherever. Because I guess he can go between dream world and reality. He Mm -hmm. can cross over that. But he has a lot of trouble crossing municipal lines. Yes. He could not leave Springwood for whatever reason. Yeah, which is interesting. Before John dies, he reveals that Kruger's child is a girl. Well, all he says is, it's not a boy. (laughs) We don't know that that means the child. Yes. And he could have said, like, Freddy had a daughter. Yeah. Or I think he knows who the daughter is by this point, doesn't he? Or does he not? I don't think so. I think he's only seen the little girl version of Freddy's daughter in the, like, dreams. So I don't think he knows that it's Maggie. Right. And Freddy goes into Maggie's brain, Mm -hmm. and they drive across the city lines, and it shatters? Like, reality shatters? So I don't know if that means that we are now in a dream for the rest of the movie, or if everything in Springwood is a dream. Is Springwood just a dream now? If you physically go into it, you are in a dream. Yeah, I don't know. I think that might be it, but it doesn't make any sense. And throughout this, the angry girl is just yelling, going, come on, let's go. (laughs) Even though she's cradling a dying boy. Yeah, there's someone literally (laughs) bleeding to death in her arms. She's like, leave him. Get in the car. And they go back to the shelter and everyone has forgotten all of the dead people because 
uh, that's Freddy's power now, too. Yeah, just amnesia. Mass amnesia. Except for Doc, who remembers. Because he's a dream student. <laughs> dream student, yeah. <laughs> and Maggie finds out that she is Freddy's daughter, and she has this dream, which I actually liked quite a bit. So she meets this little girl, and she becomes the little girl. Yes. And we get to see Freddy's, like, basement of tools mm. that he uses to murder all the children. And this Robert England version of Freddy, I think, is maybe the scariest. Mm -hmm. Because it's someone who's, like, murdered his wife and has, like, a kill room of tools to murder yeah. children. And in a movie where we're getting this wily e. coyote, Freddy Krueger... It kind of brings you back, but oh yeah, this is a, a child murderer. This yes. is an actual scary person at one point. It's nice that they reminded us of that because yeah, he's becoming too cartoony and like likable at this point in the series. And he has that line of, well, you can't be here. We're on Springwood. And he says, every town has an Elm Street. So now the rules are that he can go anywhere that has an Elm Street. I don't think he means literally oh. an Elm Street, but just that... He is everywhere, and every town has these secrets, and right. he can gain power anywhere. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> I might be doing some work for the writers on this one. I feel like we end up doing a lot of work for the writers in these movies. You know what's really funny is we do all sorts of movies on this podcast. Uh -huh. We've done like big classics like Citizen Kane. We've done your art house stuff like The Lighthouse. We never rewatch any of them. We watch them once, and mm. we talk about it. Every movie, except for the first one, yes. we've rewatched mm -hmm. in this series because we can't understand what's happening. No, and sometimes on the second watching, you do kind of figure some of it out. Yeah. And sometimes you're like, oh, I missed that moment or like whatever. You need to work hard yeah. for these movies to make sense. Yeah. And even like the synopsises that I find online, because I usually have that up every time we're talking about a movie. These are ridiculously hard to read too because i feel like people are having trouble getting all of those plot points down you could say well it's dream logic so it doesn't make sense all the time but movies one and three are dream logic yeah. as well but a they use that to their advantage mm -hmm. while these ones just use it to like obscure any sort of continuity or reality or consequence and then tracy has a fight where in her dream she murders her dream dad and fights Freddy, and she's a, a very, very bad at fighting scenes. Yes. It looks bad. And the direction is especially bad for anything that involves action, I found. Mm -hmm. And this is another one where the girl has some sort of athletic pursuit, and they show her doing it, and it's like, she's really bad. <laughs> they use that a lot. Yeah. The, the tough girl. They have yeah. to have one tough girl in a lot of these movies. It's like the girl who said, oh, I'm going to go home and lift some weights. <laughs> and they, she talks about lifting weights so much, yeah. never does it. Or the one who's on the swim team. She always talks about swimming, yeah. never swims. Never swims. Just sleeps in hot tubs. <laughs> And Freddy also fights Doc and explains that dream people gave him powers? Yeah. All right. What does that mean? But both Doc and Tracy live through their Freddy fights. And Doc can also put people to sleep, yes. we learn, which he is going to use to put... Maggie in. Yeah. To bait Freddy into the real world. And how do we know she is going into the dream world? Put on your 3D glasses <laughs> yes. now, kids, because now it's a 3D movie sometimes. I liked how they introduced when to put on the 3D glasses in the movie. But it's also not clear. No. I, I get that you have to do it because um, to make a movie all in 3D would have been prohibitively expensive mm -hmm. at this point. So they couldn't do that. So they're going to make a 3D section, which is something that other horror movies have done. And sometimes they'd even put something on the screen that says, put on 3D glasses now. Right. And it would just be for certain scenes. Right. Uh, Nightmare Island Part 4 in 3D, as oh. it's called, has like, put on 3D glasses now. So certain kills would be in in 3d that's cool um, yeah but not really <laughs> and so they did it but just having like this final sequence like that but she does come out of it later and you think take him off now but it wasn't quite and yeah. they didn't it was it was a little clumsy it, it seemed well. like the 3d glasses were supposed to be when she's in the dream world with freddy but yeah you're right she does continue it out of the yeah, dream. and she has one line of like, well, it still looks like a dream, so I guess we're still in it, but we weren't. No. It was the real world. It was the real world when she's like fighting him in the basement. Yeah. 
And then we get to see those terrible puppets. Like when she goes through the gate and it's that ancient temple or whatever mm-hmm. with the dream demons. Yes. They looked real bad and they looked funny. Yeah, they they didn't look like something out of a horror movie. No. No. And again, we get some stuff that I actually like here. She goes into Freddy's memories and we see him being taunted as a child and like smashing a, a mouse or something with yeah. a hammer. That's just kind of creepy. That's scary. This is stuff that like could have actually been in a horror movie. If the tone of this movie were different and we got to see this stuff, it would be terrifying, mm-hmm. I think. And there's that scene with a younger Freddy, not the child, but a younger version, and he's cutting himself and just yes. like, kind of enjoying it. Yeah. That, I think, it, I don't think it worked here, but I think it's due to the rest of the movie mm-hmm. and the tone that that set. So when you see something like this, you're like, oh, is this funny? Because everything <laughs> else in this movie is funny. Yeah. But I thought that actor, I don't know, he brought something He did, good. yeah. I think it, if this was supposed to be a scary movie, that this would have been terrifying. Because yeah. the idea that someone who looks like everyone else is harboring this, like, secret life that's terrifying because you never know who it could be. And I think we've seen this in other horror movies when you have a flashback and you get to see them as a child Mm -hmm. and all the seeds of who they will be. Yeah. And it, it, yeah, it elucidates this character and it has some legitimate frightening elements, Mm -hmm. but in the context of all of this, (laughs) like these talking silly puppets, it doesn't seem as scary. Yeah. And then we have this caretaker guy who is maybe Freddy's adopted father or maybe just his boss. Unclear exactly. And yeah, they don't really give you enough context. But it's Alice Cooper. Yes. And Alice Cooper is bad at this. His <laughs> scene was was really bad. He looks like he's playing a caretaker for Halloween. It looks like a purchased costume. Yeah. yeah. That wasn't great and... It, He's whipping him in a way that couldn't actually hurt, but it just no. goes on for too long. And he is billed as Freddy's father. Oh, is he? Yeah. So he's I didn't get that. It seems like be. he was working for him. Yeah, yeah, because he comes downstairs all drunk and like ready to whip and him up. And they seemed like not that different in age. Yeah, yeah. That's the other thing. It totally didn't seem like a father son age gap. And then I just have the note of. The floating skull demon things were real dumb and had real dumb voices. <laughs> That's the kind of film criticism you come to me for. Yes, right? yeah. That was real dumb. They are dumb. <laughs> but to be fair, eh, they were real dumb. They were real dumb. This whole movie was real dumb. Yeah. Yeah. And then we get to see more of this version of Freddy, which I think is the scariest version we've had in Mm -hmm. quite some time, where he doesn't have a burnt face, but he just killed his wife and he's like kind of threatening his daughter. Mm -hmm. That was scary. He's like, you won't tell, will you? You gotta take your medicine, whatever it is. So there's good stuff in this, yeah. but it's sandwiched between so much garbage that you can't take it serious. It's true. Yeah, there's, there's little nuggets of goodness. And we go back to part one with the idea that if you grab him in your dream and wake up, you Mm -hmm. bring him into the real world. And they try to do that and Doc is able to put people to sleep and wake them up instantly. Yeah. I'd love one of those machines. Yeah, that would be really cool. I couldn't fall asleep until about 4.30 last night. So I could have just been like, bloop. So she goes to bring him into the real world. But then when she wakes up, he's not there. And he did come into the real world, but it's just in a different part of the building. Yeah. I don't know why that happened. If she was holding on to him, so you'd think that they'd both appear in the same room. Yeah. Then my next note again is, I really dislike Tracy. <laughs> I don't know what she's doing at this point, but yeah, it's it's not good. She's just angry and yelling because that's yeah. what she does. And then Maggie finds Freddy... And he's kind of like playing the victim and yeah. saying like, look what they did to me. Of course I turned out this way. Yeah. And that was kind of interesting. Poor and we me. get to see him without the burnt face at this point. Mm-hmm. But then he was just using that that as a trick. And he's crawling around on the ceiling. Yeah. Another thing that I liked. It sounds like I like this movie. It does. But I'm, I'm struggling to find good things. And I do think there are good things here. There are. And then there's this big fight scene. Yes. Our big finale. We've gone through all of these movies and we finally arrived here. Yes. Nancy couldn't finish it off when nope. she brought him into the real world. The dream warriors battled him. They banded together, got dream powers. 
they found the skeleton and buried it. That couldn't do it. Nope. Amanda reabsorbing him into the womb couldn't and, keep him. I don't know, dragging him to hell. Yeah. That couldn't do it either. So it all leads to this. And how how did this play out for you? Um, I thought it was very video game. How so? Um, because you kind of mentioned it when we were watching it, but that she has like a different weapon every time the camera goes on her. Oh yeah, she does that idea where she can just keep pulling out yeah. infinite weapons from nowhere. Yeah. She's like she has a crossbow and then she has throwing stars and then she has this and then it's just like kind of fun and ridiculous. This is where the directing, I think, filled the movie the mm -hmm. most. And it sounds like I'm really um, on the director of this one where I didn't talk nearly as much about it in the last one because the last one was so bad. Yeah, yeah, the director was terrible. Probably the worst of all of them. But this one, there are problems that are all in the direction. Mm -hmm. And for someone, like, I'm not a, a real filmmaker, but I, I've done, <laughs> I've been on some sets, I've made some movies, so I, I know a little bit. And it's clear to me what the problems are and it shouldn't be i'm not talented in filmmaking if i can say like oh this is what you did wrong it, it's amateur it's not a good thing right yeah yeah someone like me shouldn't be able to pick it apart and it's not fun to listen to the problems with the direction mm -hmm. so to like kind of summarize it you couldn't tell the space at any point in time. No. How it was cut together. You never saw Freddie and Maggie together, so you didn't have an idea of what the space was. We have both Doc and Tracy are on the outside of a wall. Doc is trying to bang down a jail cell door with hitting a bar with a bat, which yeah. isn't going to work. And then Tracy is just going underneath a chain link fence and throwing in things that can be convenient yeah. whenever you need them. That was all dumb. And then the actual fight, they would do one move and then they would like reset. And they're like, okay, now we're going to do the next thing. It was like a bad stage play mm -hmm. when they're clearly not really trained in stage fighting. Yes. So they'd always have to reset. And yeah. they're like, okay, now it's your turn and to do something. And then it's this move yeah. and stop. And this move and stop. Yeah, I found it really choppy and mm -hmm. hard to figure out where they were in the room too. Yeah, the editing was terrible, but from... What I would guess is they didn't shoot enough coverage. They didn't shoot it properly, so you couldn't really fix it in editing. Like but more the editing angles sure. would have helped? Yeah, or just give us a wide, show me that space. Mm -hmm. But I think a lot of it comes down to they were using different cameras because of the 3D. And they got stuck on having shots where like, okay, now the bat is going to come out to right. the camera. But you didn't pay any attention to like, hey, where are the characters right yeah. now? What is this set? They're like, what's going to look cool in 3D? Yeah. And we're just going to shoot those things. That's what it seemed yeah. like to me. Yeah. Okay, that's a good explanation of a very confusing scene. Yeah, because the camera would have been much physically larger than what they were using in other stuff. So mm. maybe it's because of that. True, yeah. Either way, it looks bad. <laughs> and eventually, Maggie stabs him in the chest with the glove. Yes. And then Tracy says, here, take this, and throws Breckenmeyer's bomb. Oh, and yeah. she stabs the bomb into Freddy's chest and says, Happy Father's Day, and gives him a kiss on the cheek. Yeah. Because now she's like wisecracking? Yeah. Where did that come from? She also calls him daddy in this scene, and I did not like that. It's weird that that would be her reaction to finding out that dream demons are real. Yes. My father was, in fact, kind of one of them and has murdered... At this point, hundreds of people. And then she's like making jokes about it. Yeah. That seems odd. And then she has sassy taglines like Freddy. Yeah. That was weird. Yeah, I didn't like that. But then Freddy, this monster we've seen through all these movies, his last words before he <laughs> dies are kids. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, shucks. What could he yeah, do? Yeah, I didn't like That's that. That's where you're going to end. Yeah. I get that this is like a funny movie, but you've actually put in some gravity at the end mm -hmm. with all of those flashbacks and then you just throw it all the all away with this ending scene of like happy father's day oh kids yeah terrible <laughs> just terrible oh and more terrible so he explodes his face flies towards the screen in a just for 3d thing yeah and then his face comes out of his own mouth again and then that face explodes into a bunch of pieces or something yeah and then the doctor rips the door off the hinges. And after all this, she just goes, Freddy's dead. 
Credits. The end. It just no wrap up <laughs> no, at all. No, nothing to like tell you what happens. Just the end. I think at that point they're just like, man, I, I can't do any more of this 3D camera. No. We're out of budget. The scene already doesn't make any sense, so let's just end it. Yeah. And they're like, yeah, the end. Goodbye. Are they still doing it every year or is it every other year now? Like a movie. This one was two years after the last one, but it's still like pretty quick because we have one is 84, two is 85, three 87, four 88, five 89, six 91. Okay. So they're, so we're still they're like coming out. They're them churning out. them out real fast. Yeah, that, that, uh. That checks out because it just seems like they were like, oh, it's already time to start on the next one or like yeah. in a lot of these. And this one is very much, it seems like maybe there was meant to be a scene at the end, like a final kind of wrap up scene. But this was very much not. Oh, uh, this was very much not um, a satisfying ending. No, the deaths of Freddy in many of the other movies were way better than this. Mm hmm. That one where all the arms and people come yes. out of him and pull him apart? Yeah. That's a good all way for souls. him to end. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this is also one where we don't get the skipping girls. Oh, I never noticed that. Yeah, yeah there's no skipping, skipping girls. girls in this one. Because I guess we're not in Springwood very much. Mm. And when we are, all the kids are dead. True. Although those weren't live kids. Those were ghost no, kids. those were ghost kids. So they should still be around. Totally. So I kind of missed that part of the ending. Yeah. Because it's like formulaic. And if this is truly the last one, it should be somewhere in the movie. It is a shame for this series to end like this. Mm -hmm. Like, I know we're going to do another movie, but without talking too much about that one, let's say that at the time they thought this is the end. Mm -hmm. They held a big funeral for Freddy, like on set and stuff. And people from old movies came by and like they did a big thing. Oh, wow. So to them, they thought this was the end. And to most people, this is... And even in the movie world, this is kind of the end. So let's just treat it as the end. It's a bad way for him to go out. Yeah, for such a huge franchise, just for it to go bloop, yeah. credits, seemed too abrupt. I didn't like it. Well, that brings us to the end. What did you like about this movie? Um, I There were some fun moments and uh, fun ideas, like the uh, video game death, and the idea of falling being his biggest fear, and that's kind of how he dies. Um, and some of the like catchphrases were fun. For me, for good stuff, I tended to like a lot of the flashback things, and mm-hmm. I liked the backstory of Freddy, not the part where demons came to him right before he died yeah. and said, like, hey, want to be a demon now? And he's like, yeah, I want it all. That was terrible. But when we get to see <laughs> Freddy as a human, yes, like just a tortured and also essentially evil person, mm-hmm. that was good and that was scary. Mm-hmm. And some of the light stuff was fun because they do get like spooky fun, mm-hmm. which I think is, is is good. I like those types of movies, but some of the stuff you said is actually some of my least favorite, oh. like the video game death. All of the video game stuff I thought was very, very bad. Yeah. Very much like in the mid 90s when all TV shows would have like an internet episode. Right. They're like, oh no, we're trapped in the net. And (laughs) even people at the time knew that this is garbage. Yeah. It seemed like that kind of stuff. And all of the, um, like the references were odd. I get Wizard of Oz. That's kind of timeless. Everyone's yeah. going to know that. It's an odd choice to include, but sure, whatever. Yeah, it's yeah. kind of fun. We didn't but, need as much Wizard of Oz as we got. And very specific things like the Nintendo Power Glove. Like yeah. You didn't need that. You knew at the time that that wasn't going to last for mm-hmm. more than six months. No one's going to remember <laughs> that. And how wily Coyote he got. You either need to go further and continue that on or just take it out. Mm -hmm. It was in between or it was so heavy in the first half and not as present later that I thought it was it was bad. What did you not like? I didn't like how hard they worked to make this funny. Yeah. You can do horror comedy. Oh, yeah. And I love horror comedy. But this seems like they were really trying. They were like killing themselves in an attempt to make this a funny movie. I think your best horror comedies come with funny situations existing in a horror world, yeah. not the horror being funny. Yeah. Like your zombie land, for some reason, that's the first one I came up with. <laughs> yeah. Where the characters have like 
their interactions are funny, but the stuff happening is still, still scary. Yeah, it's dire. And they treat it funny in, in points. Mm-hmm. And even going back to things like early Peter Jackson, they're trying to do more like that. Like, it's so silly, it's mm-hmm. funny. And Peter Jackson can do it, but he goes all out in those early right. ones. It is so over the top, so crazy that, yeah, you get in that heightened world. Mm-hmm. And here it's bits and pieces. Yeah, I didn't like it because it didn't seem like the movie knew what it was. No, it, it seemed was very forced. Like that we had all this really creepy stuff of Freddy being real, like a real man, not this burnt up like actor. Um, and then also you get all these like silly slapstick kind of catchphrases, which I so I didn't feel like they went together. No. It felt like two different movies that they cut together. It, like really the last couple of movies, it just seemed like what it is. We have this character, people know him, we'll make some money, we just need to get something out mm-hmm. quickly. And it kind of just seemed like that, which yeah. is probably the least forgivable just thing about this. Turning Freddy yeah. out. Do you have your revised rankings now? Ooh, um, I think my revised ranking is one, three. I feel like... Two and four are kind of interchangeable. Yeah. And then five and six. Oh, no, sorry. Six and then five. Okay. Yeah. I think I pretty much agree with you. I go, it's kind of like tiers. One is its own tier. Mm -hmm. That is a fantastic movie. Three is a very good movie. That's its own tier. And then two, four, and six, I think are all kind of close. Mm -hmm. I would go... Four, two, six. Right. But I'm not so hard on those ones because those three are all kind of in the middle there. Yeah. I feel like at the beginning, I disliked two a lot more because it was coming between one and three. Mm -hmm. And when it's compared to that, it's tough. Yeah. So it's almost like you'd have to go rewatch two now. I kind of want to rewatch one just to see if all of this like nostalgia that I'm having for it is real. Oh, it is. One is very good. (laughs) (laughs) But I think it doesn't get affected by the rest of these because it is so different. It's like a standalone, yeah. Yeah. It's its own thing, and it's just like a straight-up serious movie, which the others aren't really. Mm -hmm. So I would go one, three, four, two, six, (laughs) and then five is its own tier as well of being garbage. Yeah. The garbage tier. Yes. So our second sponsor of the episode is Pod Power. With Pod Power, our sponsors are making it possible for us to amplify the voices of Albertans and Alberta podcasters. This episode, the Edmonton Community Foundation is helping us give a Pod Power shout out to Is This For Real? Is This For Real is a podcast about various facets of black life in Edmonton. In this first season of the show, Breaking the Blue Wall, host Omar Salafu explores anti-black racism and policing and tells stories about policing in schools, accountability in Alberta's policing system, and the impacts of police violence on black Edmontonians. You can listen to the podcast and read more about each episode at isthisforreal.ca. And if you're not tired of hearing us, we are doing a guest spot on a really fun podcast called Three Kitchens. On their October 25th episode, we are going to join them. They talk about food. We talk about movies. So we are going to get together and talk about Trick or Treat, the really fun anthology Halloween horror movie, which we've talked about a little bit on this podcast Mm -hmm. in the past. So we'll discuss that. And it's going to be paired with some delicious treats. Yes. And maybe some tricks. So you can listen to Three Kitchens wherever you are listening to us right now. Well, now Freddy's dead and we're all done, right? (laughs) Yeah. Just kidding. There's two more movies. (laughs) Well, there's one more, really. Right. Uh, You know what? (laughs) We'll get into it next time. That's not an easy answer. (laughs) But what we are going to do is, in just a few days, we will be covering Wes Craven's new nightmare, Mm -hmm. which I haven't told you anything about. All you know is that it's kind of different. Yes. And I have been saying that it's kind of over, but then there's also this. Yes. So I'm trying not to like read into that at all because I don't want to spoil it for myself. But what we do know is it's not even called A Nightmare on Elm Street 7. It's just called Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Interesting. Okay. Any thoughts about this going in? Hopes? 
I get, dreams. Wes Craven was who did the beginning. He did part. He wrote and directed part one. Okay. Okay. So and I wonder, he wrote an early draft of part three. Okay. I wonder if this is meant to be the sequel to part one. Mm. Like if Wes Craven was in control of the series, right. this is what he would have done after he did part one. Is that close or well, something? That's something that we've seen with the Halloween movies yeah. in recent years. I'm not going to tell you yes okay. or no. Of I course not. We're just going to go not. watch it. So <laughs> check out New Nightmare, sometimes called A Nightmare on Elm Street 6. And that's what we're going to be talking about next. Awesome. What I did say is at the very beginning of this that I forget most of them, but I think one, three, and seven are good. Okay. And we're heading into number seven. We're heading so into number seven. Although I, I think I might have just said six a second ago. I got okay. confused. There's a lot of them. <laughs> There's a lot of them. And we'll be skipping over Freddy versus Jason because you've never seen a Friday the 13th. I only know Jason the dog. Yes. <laughs> that, the, the only real Jason. <laughs> exactly. And then we will cover the remake in a week as well. But join us next week for New Nightmare. Excellent. Woo! It's going to be just like that. Is it actually spooky? I'm not telling you anything. <laughs>